Hi everyone, welcome to Quilt Cam. This is Bonnie Hunter in the basement on a beautiful Sunday in February. The sun is shining outside. We've got daffodils in our yard. So for those of you in snowier climates, just know that it's coming soon. In fact, I'm really happy to do uh, be able to do Quilt Cam today as our power's been out. Our power was out for more than an hour and a half and I was a little bit on the worried side. A phone call into the power company let us know that something was going on and they expected the power to return right around 1 p.m., which was about an hour ago. So I've been running around <laughs> ever since. In fact, um, it was such a gorgeous day and it's really dark here in the basement with no power. So I picked up my hand crank machine and these little string units I've been working on. Some are in panels. When I have long strips, I can do this. Some are in pieces. When they're short strips, I can cover the paper and make good use of all of the pieces so that they're all gone. And enjoyed being outside on the deck and uh, and, and hoping that the, that the power would come back on. And it did. And I'm thrilled that you're here with me. If this is your first time for Quilt Cam, this is something that happens not every week, not on schedule. Sometimes it's on a weeknight. Sometimes it's on a weekend afternoon. Sometimes it happens on the fly with no um, pre-notification at all. Just depends on, on my whim. I do travel a lot, uh, teaching and lecturing, and everything works around that. So it's not often that I'm home on a Sunday, and I'm thrilled to be able to do this um, today, Quilt Cam, with you. If you are new to Quilt Cam, um, you might be watching this on Facebook. You might be watching it on my blog after the fact. It will be archived there. You might be watching it on YouTube. But um, everything happens as far as all of the questions that are asked, all of the um, correspondence between watchers and myself through email. So if you want to share a photo of what you're working on with me, I would love to see that. You're going to send your photo to my Gmail address. It's simple. It's quiltville at gmail.com. If you are leaving me a comment on Facebook or on YouTube or wherever this is embedded, I won't see that until much after the fact because we're live here and the camera is quite a ways away from where I'm sewing. So uh, th this, is, this is how it works and I'm stumbling over my words. I've got a new project. Oh, I also have a new shirt. Do you like this? Netflix and quilt. This is my life. This came from Maker Valley. You can find them on the internet. Look for makervalley.com and they have all different kinds of, of quilting shirts. This one just called my name because this is my life. <laughs> so I had to have it. I'm just thrilled. Um, Quilt Makers, 100 Blocks, Volume 14. This is the block that I am working on for the quilt that I am making. And this is my block here. It's found on page 32. And it's called Straits of Mackinac. So can you see the turquoise there, the string piecing bits, and the tall star points that will come later, and all of those lovely half square triangles? Well, in the center of this block is a square on point. And those kinds of things can be a little bit tricky. Um, usually the math works that the outside corner triangles are, are half square triangles, and we're used to cutting these. But something happens when you take a center square and you put it on point and you the measurement has to go corner to corner across the unit for whatever finish size that unit's going to be and that makes this size quite stupid it, it really does and and i don't like to cut in increments of five sixteenths sometimes if the math is really crazy if i'm doing very small units i'll paper piece these like the cornerstones that i did on my cheddar sampler quilt a couple years ago those were two inch on point, square and square and square. So the square in the center was on point. The whole unit finished at two inches. I paper piece those. These are going to finish bigger, and I think I can rotary cut for these. And I have a tool that has been in my arsenal for a long time. In fact, I went online to see if these are still available, and I didn't find them in print. You know, basic units are basic units. However, we do patchwork and however we tackle them. Um, this one is called the Easy Center Square. If I wonder if I can put something behind so that you can read read the thing there. It's Easy Center Square by Sharon Holtgren. She's the same gal that did Easy Angle Rulers and several other ruler, rulers. And some of them are now out of manufacture. But you can still find them maybe on Amazon used or on eBay secondhand. Look for this because it is my left and right hand when I am doing on-point center squares. The measurement for this 
was going to be something something five sixteenths. That's no fun to cut. No fun to cut. But with this ruler, this line here is the width that you cut your strip. So I put that line for a four inch finished block or a three inch finished block or a five inch finished block, whatever it is, on the edge of the fabric. And I'm cutting my strip the correct width for this center square. Then it's got the square size up here in the corner so that you can just put that line on the end of your strip and cut your squares the size that you need for the center squares. So I absolutely love this ruler. I'm sad that it's not in production. If it were still in production, you can bet that I would be using this for any workshop or, or class I teach that requires square and a square because I can cut the sizes that I need. I can sew them with the correct seam allowance and there's no sliver, sliver trimming down. All of the other um, products out there require to go really big to come back down. And yeah, you have perfection, but you also have a lot of wasted fabric and a, and a lot of extra time. So these center square units are going to go in between these. And I thought it would be a fun thing to sew on while we chat today. I'm going to refresh my page right here just to make sure that Quilt Cam is going live. The last time we did this, I was frozen on the Facebook screen, but it still works on my tablet. So, uh, and we, we are charged to 100%, so we, we are good for a while. Okay, so it looks like we're there. I'm thrilled. So if you want to share with me what you're working on, how things are in your world, I will get sewing these. These center squares are going to get four scrappy turquoise triangles on either side. So I am just going to center this one on here. And I did cut these um, with the essential triangle tool ahead of the game. And we're just going to chain sew some here. I'm going to make my stitch length a little bit bigger. I was um, paper piecing last night or string piecing. Square in a square is one of those things where you have to be careful that your points are equal, that are, your points are happening in the center of your blocks as you open those up and that you have that quarter inch depth at all four sides around the corner of that block. But I do like to chain piece these, so I'm going to grab these. I didn't cut enough of these. I had just enough time once the power was back on to cut myself a handful. And well, that'll be plenty to work on for today, and then we'll get back to cutting some more. When you're sewing square in a square, if you want to fold your square and give it a little bit of a crease, that gives you a place where you can place the, the corner of your triangle dead center so that there won't be any shifting or wonkiness happening there. And these are just a, some of my favorite turquoise that I got out of the scraps. I love big polka dots and fun patterns. I was only able to cut from three strips before it was time for Quilt Cam to go live. So here we go on this one. I'm just thrilled with this project. You know how it goes when that one kind of sewed over itself. I think it'll be okay. When you know what you're going to do for the blocks, but you're not sure what you're going to do for the layout. I took the blocks. I already knew what the blocks are because they're in the magazine, but I wanted a really neat layout that made some secondary designs. And I played with that in EQ7 yesterday afternoon. And... I was so excited. I could hardly wait to get to the sewing machine. So just wait until this comes out. Um, the plan is that I'll be teaching this at the Grand Hotel Needle Art Seminar in May of 2019, which means it needs to hurry up and get published so that it's available for my students in 2019. And, and it's about a two-year process to get things done. So um, this is on the front burner. And we'll get that going. So one more. And then we'll check in to see who's with us today. <clears throat> I was in uh, <laughs> YouTube the other day. And there was a comment made by somebody who said, way too much chatter. There's just way too much chatter for this quilt cam. We can't see what you're doing. We're not learning anything. And I need to let you know that this is my own personal sewing time. It's not really a workshop or a tutorial. We're just spending time together. And I will talk about whatever comes to the top of my head at any given moment. So my, my, my response to her was, um, it is what it is, and I am who I am. And Quilt Cam is just 
our time together and yes, I talk a lot. So I'm going to check right into the email to see who's joining me today. So here's, oh, we've got a big birthday, big 60s shout out. She says, any chance you can wish my best friend and your biggest fan a happy birthday today. Here she is at a Silomar last year in Mary Lou Weidman's uh, class. So excited to see empty spools on your schedule. And this is a happy birthday. If the picture will open up, there she is. So happy big 6-0 to our quilting friend here. So happy to have your friend join us and I hope that you're joining us too. And yes, I have a Silomar on my calendar um, for two back-to-back -back years. So that'll be a lot of fun. That's not coming up until next year and then 2019, but it will happen. We will be there. Happy, happy birthday, girl. Hope your day is wonderful. And this one is from, it just says putting the last border on my jewel box quilt and it came from a phone number. So if you are emailing me from a phone number, it might be best instead of sending that as a text message from your phone to my email address to actually go into your email program. Then you can attach a photo and I'll have your name and your information. But this is from area code 850. Sounds like that jewel box border's going on. That's wonderful. Diane Oak says, yippee quilt cam. Hi, Diane. She says, uh, so excited you're doing quilt cam. Can't wait to see your Straits of Mackinac quilt. Uh, she's trying to get six projects done before she sees me in Grand Haven in just a few weeks. March is coming around the corner. Remember, daffodils are out here. And uh, we're really excited to to uh, be going to Michigan in March again. And I'm laughing because as I'm sitting here, my computer, my laptop that I watched the live feed on to see what you're seeing, <laughs> it just went into automatic restart. It is it says, getting windows ready. Don't turn off your computer. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, that's okay. We've still we've still got the the tablet going, so we're we're still good. That is too funny. So if you heard that little swoosh sound, um, powers off, back on, laptops rebooting. It's all good. Uh, she's Diane says she's got two done and one top, and the others are in various stages. So she's with us to to sew today, and she says, as your quote said the other day, if you don't set goals, you can't reach them. So that's Diane from Portage, Michigan, or Portage, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Ellen Beckin says, hello from Boise, go Broncos, with a big smile. And she says, yesterday I finished this and this. This morning I started sewing at 10 a.m. as my memory said you were starting at 12 Eastern. Nope, that's an extra one in there. So this one's done too. And she says... And a picture of her leader and enders on here as well. And she says, hooray for Quilt Villa, Virginia. Yes, we're excited. So here's her projects. Oh, that's really pretty. That's really pretty. So this is what's on her design wall. Gorgeous use of triangles there. I just, I can't make a quilt hardly without triangles somewhere. I just love them. And there's so many different ways to make triangles that there shouldn't be um, any problem finding a technique that works the best for you. But I sure love those blues. Those are just gorgeous. And her other photo, it still says getting windows ready. Don't turn off your computer. That's just hysterical. Okay. Oh, how cute. So she has done some framing on some fussy cut squares right there and then set them together. That would be a great baby quilt or anything for anyone that uh, specialty novelty fabric would be awesome. She called that one happy blocks. And she's also got, oh, hooray. She's got her half square triangles as leaders and enders on the side. So those are coming along just just great. So happy to have you join me today. I love to see it. Love those turquoises. I've just been in love with all of these colors. And I'm taking them from um, a light aqua to turquoise to any kind of watery blue. And sometimes there's a little bit of pop of navy. Because when you watch the, the water in the Great Lakes, it will do all of these colors. And it's, it's just going to be the most awesome, awesome thing. Okay. So on, on Quilt Villa, update on this thing. So we, we had our inspection, and the inspection went just fine, or, and the, the appraisal went just fine, and every, everything looks like it's on target. So we should be closing on the new cabin in Virginia on St. Patrick's Day. 
and we will celebrate with all kinds of, of green things because uh, I have never seen anybody so happy as I have my husband who, who grew up on a farm in Oregon and has always wanted land. And, and you would think that we, we have given him this whole, this whole mountain. Well, we have 42 acres of it. And uh, he's, he's just so excited. I have never seen anyone more happy and he works so hard he deserves it. So I'll, I'll be sewing on the porch and in the basement and he can have the rest of the mountain to play on. So this one is from Joanne who says, don't see this one getting made often, but I saved a bunch of older addicted to scraps pages and thought I would give this a try. She's using her inch and a half strips for my block berry bushel that was in a an earlier addicted to scraps column. So she's pulled out her purples and her, her pinks and her deep pinky reds, anything that is kind of berry colored for this, this, um, this block. I love the sh shade of those blueberries next to those strawberries and raspberries. That's really fun. Great way to use up those inch and a half strips. The truth of the matter is, is that there's not enough time to make them all, even though I want to. Um, it's six issues a year that the Addicted to Scraps column happens in. And th those are six blocks that demand to be made into real quilts at some point. Sadie, are you coming to say hi? Come over here. Come over here. Somebody just came down, pushed my door open, walked right in. Come here. Do you want to say hello to everybody? Do you want to come jump up? Come here. Come jump up. Come on. Come jump up. She's just looking at me like, what? Come here. Come here. Come say hi to everybody. You say hi to everybody. I know why she's in here. There's uh, somebody's doing target practice outside. We live in an area where most of the lots are an acre and a half to three to five acres. And there's some target practice going on somewhere. She doesn't like guns. So this is when she usually, in fact, her tail is tucked. And she's shaking just a little bit. Was somebody shooting stuff? Was somebody shooting stuff to you? Huh? You can hide down here by me. So the older that she gets, she's 11 now. Um, the, the more scared she gets. Any kind of loud song. She doesn't sound. She doesn't even like bubble wrap. She, she just... Uh, goes all to pieces with bubble, bubble wrap or taking cardboard boxes apart or shooting target practice outside. So she's in here. She'll hang out with us for a while. So here's one. Oh my goodness, isn't that beautiful? So she's quilting today, and this is from SSV Jean. Sometimes the emails don't have phones on them, or if they come with from a phone number, they don't. But she is quilting quilting so she's putting in the quilting stitches by machine on her en provence quilt so that's coming along just great i love to see the texture of that there were a couple of quilts that were finished that are hand quilted that were posted to our open studio page today i'll have to see if i can find those photos and share them on the blog remember that tomorrow we are doing our last mystery monday link up i was going to do it last week but I was in Texas teaching and the timing just didn't work right. And I figured people could use an extra week to get um, a little bit more progress made. So that link up will happen tomorrow on the blog. Okay, Lisa says, En Provence for Quilt Cam pick. My laptop did the same thing with Windows Update. So my hubby has graciously donated his so I can watch you today. I'm starting to piece En Provence and also cleaning up some leftovers from Grand Illusion into Christmas placemats. So she's got her set up right there. Looks like there's some bright sunny light outside of her window. I just love seeing people's sewing spaces. It's inspiring to know that uh, we all can relate to whatever the mess is, whatever the space is, and however we get it done. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to shorten my chain here because I want to show you how some of these, these finish. So I am going to just finger press these. I did measure earlier where my quarter inch seam needs to fall. In fact, this little card has been down since the last piecing I did, and it'll just stay there even when I'm doing stitch and flip corners or putting on a binding. It can just stay there. It's not in the way at all. Okay. When I'm doing square in a square, I like to do opposite corners. So the next ones will go on this other side, and then you'll come back and do the top and the bottom. And I've got these um, triangles layered in such a way that each time I, I just have to grab one from the top of the pile and it's gonna be different, hopefully, than what's on the other side of the square. So all four triangles on these should be different.
This is a 1950s 301 by Singer. And it's knee controlled, which I am really enjoying because I've had some hamstring issues from too much gas pedal sewing, I think, having your leg extended and hamstring issues. So uh, this feels very comfortable. At first it was weird sewing with a knee control, but I really like it. Okay. So every time I grab one of these, in fact, these, these triangles were left over from Grand Illusion. And I'm happy to have found a place where they go. Yeah. Can you guys hear that? Do you hear that shooting outside my window? Poor Sadie. She's just shaking like, like nobody's business. They do target practice across the way. So they're not shooting at anything, but it's still a big boom. Yeah, I'm excited about this quilt. And one more. And no matter what I grab from this pile, it can go just fine. So it looks like my computer is done updating, and now I'm just sta staring at whatever my screensaver photo is. We're not going to worry about what's happening on Quilt Cam Live. I'm just going to trust that it's still going. All right, we'll get this one off the back. I like to work in shorter batches, so even if I need to make a hundred of something, I might work in batches of 20, just because I like to see the progress happening. And these center squares are some of the fabric I brought back from Texas with me, so I feel good about new stash going right into the project. Okay, so here we're chained this way. We've got the two sides on, and now we'll add the top and the bottom. If I weren't on quilt cam, I might use an iron to press these, but finger pressing works great for many things. Let's see. This one. Now, when you're piecing triangles for, for square and a square, let me see if I can find one that'll show up. I think this, this one will. Okay. So we've sewn these on with the quarter inch seam, but can you see that there's still a tiny bit of dog ear hanging out here and out here and out here? And these were ones that I had trimmed the dog ears with the easy angle or the, or the essential triangle tool or the whatever, or if you're using your AccuQuilt, it'll trim those off. There's still a little bit of triangle sticking out so I go ahead and trim that even with the sides of the square so that I have a nice straight edge to lay the next triangles at and it just helps with placement especially if you have an edge guide on your foot that might push your fabric if you had little sticking out triangles and that gives me a nice flat space to lay these What I love about having both dog ears trimmed off, can you see how this piece is going to just fit and it's even on the sides here with the edges of the other triangles? That's how I know I'm going to get a good fit. It's not perfect all the time, but it's a lot less sliver trimming than going big and sliver trimming down. Okay, so we'll do the same thing on this one. I'm going to trim those little ears, those little corners that go beyond the edge of the center square need to come off so that I have a good straight edge to place the next piece at. I love this method because I don't have to pull off paper. I save the paper piecing for the really odd sizes. That looks good. We'll finish these three and then we'll pick up where we left off with the questions. I'd love to know today's um, blog post. I was posting about different ways that we can dispose of our dull rotary blades. One of the comments was to save the little, or one of the th things I shared was to save the little package that they come in 
and when they're dull, you mark on there used, wrap it with tape when you're ready to throw it away, and write on there sharp so that whoever deals with the trash down the road knows that there is something in there that they shouldn't handle without protection. Another lady had shared that she uses a Parmesan cheese container. So you have the, the side of the lid that has just the holes that you can lift that lid up and drop needles in, or the other side where it's a big wide opening. You flip the lid and, and it's big enough to drop blades down in there. But the nice thing is, is you can see those sharp objects in there. So anybody who picks this up during the recycle process knows these are metal items in here and they're sharp. You can see that they're sharp. Another idea that came in was to use a small Altoids tin. And when the Altoids tin is full, because it is metal, tape it and, and put it in your recycle bin for metals because those can all be melted down and, and made into um, new metal things. So rather than just dropping things in the trash, um, I know people who have suggested just wrapping a dull blade in, in duct tape and writing on it individually sharp and dropping it in their regular trash. But we can go farther. We can recycle these um, for metal recycling. So they would just go in the same recycle bin as your soup cans and other metal things. But if you have an idea, I'd love to know. So send me an email and let me know what your idea for recycling um, blades are or how you maintain your, your, your sharps and your brand new blades and the used ones. Some of the used ones I save for paper. I use the used ones for cutting phone book pages down to size or cutting triangles. And I can go through through blades fairly quickly. I like to trim up my quilt with a rotary blade and a ruler and get a really good square corner before I put binding on. And I tell you what, running that blade through batting really dulls a blade quickly. So Tell me, tell me how you deal with your rotary blade disposal. I'd love to know that. Okay, trimming some more corners here. I just think that trimming these corners to give a nice straight edge before sewing triangle three and four on, it makes a huge difference in how the pieces come together. And we're going to, whoops, two of those we already have. So let's try one of these. Trying to put on different things here. So something new and something old. Remember, if you do a lot of square and square, see if you can find this ruler. It says Easy Center Square by Sharon Holtgren. I love this thing. And square and a square is a unit that's never going to go out of style. And I'd much rather have accurate rotary cutting, even though it's in a weird increment, like something, something, five sixteenths, instead of having to go big or sliver trim down. Okay. One more triangle here. Oh, we gotta get those corners off. And then we'll be back in email business. <laughs> They're, they are just shooting away. She is just shaking on the floor, bless her heart. At this point, as old as she is, I wish she were hard of hearing because then maybe it wouldn't bother her so bad. Let me take one of these and I'll show you how nice. So do you see I've got a nice straight edge across the top here. And on this side, I've got my quarter inch depth. And then sometimes there's just a tiny bit of the white corner peeking up. And I can go back and just trim that. Just trim those little white corners. So this will have one more triangle added. And it'll be the size that I need without having to sliver trim anything down. It's just ready to go. And that all happens because the center square is the right size, thanks to this ruler that is not being manufactured anymore that I could find. But see, maybe you have one of these in your ruler box. Maybe you know somebody who's not using one. I, I have to have this. This is as important to me as my Tri-Rex rulers, my Essential Triangle tool, and my AccuQuilt. I need this size to do these square and a square units. Okay. I also need a drink of water occasionally. 
Okay, so we have all the way down to the bottom because you guys have been really, really busy. This is from Judy Troutman, and she says, Today I'm working on Scott Flanagan's ribbon dance. So, Scott Flanagan, if you're out there, hello. She says, using En Provence as her leaders and enders. Hope you have a great day of piecing. And this is Judy in Virginia. Soon to be my state mate. If I can get this to pop up. Remember, I'm in a basement. Oh, Judy, that is gorgeous. So it's a log cabin variation up there on her design wall. Look at those colors pop. Isn't that gorgeous? And you can see where she's watching quilt cam right there while she does this. This is awesome. Thank you. And then we have... I'm working from the bottom up. You guys are so busy. <laughs> I see Siobhan. I see Siobhan. I have a Jones treadle that is free to a good home. Thought I'd give you first shot at it. Oh, my goodness. Siobhan. Yes. <laughs> yes. But how will I get it from you? I am actually. Oh, my goodness. This is beautiful. So she's got a Jones treadle. I don't even know if this, I don't think this was supposed to be a quilt cam post. So never mind. I'm keeping this one to myself. You want to see a picture? So let's see if I can get, she doesn't have a picture of the front of the machine, just the back. But it's a Jones treadle in a gorgeous cabinet. So I think, I think, I think that has to be a yes for the new cabin. So we will get back to her later. Carolyn says, on Provence, working slowly. This is Carolyn from Weatherford, Texas. She's got her neutral four patches going on strong. And her wonder clips are doing the job of helping her hold sets together. How many of you use wonder clips? Love wonder clips? They are great, especially if the stack is fairly thick. And I should have used them. I forgot to pull them out. These are stacks of 10 triangles. And let me tell you, to get the pin in and out usually results in a bent pin. But but Wonder Clips would have been really easy to hold this together. So I need to get mine out. Thank you for the mention. And if you are a blog follower and you like the Quilty Box giveaways that happen, you'll want to keep watching the blog because we've got another one coming up soon. And guess what's in it? Did I say Wonder Clips? Yes, I did. Those are gorgeous four patches. I love them. Keep going. Paula says, Quilt Cam woohoo. Snowing here in the Northeast. Great day for Quilt Cam. Makes me feel almost guilty for those daffodils that are coming up in my yard. Almost. Not quite, but almost. She says, great day. I'm putting the final borders on En Provence and throwing in some leaders and enders too. So here's her quilt. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So she's got that laid out on the floor. She's getting her borders on. And uh, remember that the En Provence mystery pattern has been retired from the blog and is now a digital download. And you'll find that in the Quiltville store. In fact, we just finished with a big sale on it, but it'll go on sale again if you miss that sale. And these are her lovely little leaders and enders, her hourglass blocks. How many of you are participating in our hourglass leader and ender challenge? I'm feeling a little bit guilty. Mine need to come back out to play because I've been just using the units as the leaders and enders of each other. But I really need to be making some progress on that one. And my pile of cut triangles is at the cabin. So I'll be getting those this week and getting to town on those. Beautiful. Carolyn says she's got a finish. She says just finished putting the binding on this today after taking it off the long arm. Midnight twisted cards. So she's got some um, deck of cards or what do they what do they call those? Card play card <laughs> card deck card midnight cards on her on the bed right there. I know they have a traditional name. What is the name for that? I always loved it because it looks so 3D spinning. I'm biggieing this so that you can see what her block. Card trick. That's what it is. Card tricks. I love it. That looks so great. Have fun flipping that binding. And then Liz says that there's no sound. I don't know if there's no sound. It seems like... Um, that there, everybody else has sound just fine. So if you Google square in a square ruler, one came up from Deb Tupper. Nope. Deb Tucker's is a great ruler, but it has you go big to sliver trim down. That's not what I want. All of, all of Deb's um, rulers are great, but they make you go big first 
to sliver trim down. I want things cut the size I need them. And that's what this ruler does. But thank you, Diane. That might work great for somebody else. And here's a <laughs> Jill who said, JR who says you need to redesign the square in the square ruler for us. Add it to your store. Oh, I don't know if I have time for that, but that might that might be fun. I you know it's sad when when rulers and tools go go out of print. There was one for an eight pointed star that was called the Easy Eight, and it, all of the eight point star diamonds were cut from strips cutting the strips with the lines on the ruler. So it wasn't a, a ruler that you would use for basic math. It was a specialty ruler that this line was this, this times 16th. And, and it was wonderful. And that one's not on the market anymore either. Nancy says, leader ender challenge. You asked which quilt cam, which I just watched this morning for suggestions for this year's leader and ender. How about light, dark triangle string squares? We could do that. We could do that. Um, in fact, I was doing all of those string squares. Um, these are my blocks, and they were kind of an addiction, too. And these will spin around in the quilt and look kind of very contemporary and fun. But these are just half light, half dark, and you could do them any size. And I was thinking that this might be fun. We haven't done a string challenge, but here's the thing about, about strings for leaders and enders is that when you're sewing the strings, the stitch has to be really small if you're sewing through paper so that the paper comes off easy. And if I'm doing a bunch of regular piecing and I want to throw in a string leader and ender, I have to put my stitch length down before I can sew across that paper and then put it back up so that I can go back to the, the normal size of, of piecing that I'm doing. So strings are kind of their own thing. And, and this, it would be a great challenge on its own, but probably not for a leader ender because of the stitch length thing. I don't like to sew my regular patchwork with a very, very tiny stitch in case I have to take something out. But I've had several requests for rail fence, and that would be fun because you could also do those half light, half dark, or you could do them alternating dark light, dark light, dark light, or you could do them red, white, blue. You could do rail fence in many different ways. So I'm, I'm thinking that we're leaning towards, towards rail fence, but that shouldn't stop you from making those string blocks if you want to. So we have, she didn't send a picture. Oh, she did, Nancy, this is beautiful. She's got a lot of sunlight coming through her window and she's sewing on her vintage machine. I've got light from my overheads there too light from her vintage from her window and sewing her vintage machine finishing up her own provence that's wonderful okay let's put triangle number four on here so this is what i want want people to understand the difference between going big and sliver trimming down and everything else out there that i have found whether it was jody barrows who first did the square and a square ruler a lot of her units turn out to have bias on the outside and and that's okay but it doesn't always work with the strip sizes that I keep on hand so um, there then there's the other rulers like um, the Deb Tucker rulers which give a beautiful result but you have to cut big to sliver trim down so again it's not that the cutting big is a problem but it doesn't work with the sizes of strips that I already have cut and on hand so this works really well. I had to cut the squares, uh, the center squares, a different size. So that came from fat quarters for the ruler. But the, the triangles are easily cut from two and a half inch strips with the essential triangle tool or with your AccuQuilt die or whatever you use to cut triangles with no sliver trimming down. So think about the time that you're saving here. If I have to take time to cut odd sizes, from my stash, that means I'm pulling out fat quarters and I'm going to the ironing board first to iron everything to cut really odd sizes so that I can sew them a certain way so I can use a specialty ruler so that I can then trim everything back down to normal. So I've wasted time and I've wasted fabric. And it, it doesn't work to pull the variety that I need. If I were needed a uh, a hundred different fabrics for, for triangles on the outside, I'm having to pull through so many fat quarters to cut wider strips to cut these triangles so I can trim them all back down to a size I already have. So that's, that's my deal. And that's why I love this. It's just for cutting the center square. Your triangles that go on are your normal size triangles that, that the block calls for. 
and and there's no waste there's no waste it's just very very easy so we're going to stick this one on here Now sometimes because we're, we are hand guiding, I might have a seam that went a little bit wonky. And if I don't want to fix the seam, I can sliver trim a little bit here and there. That's not a problem. But as a rule, I want to cut it and sew it and move on. I don't want to cut it big in an odd size from fat quarters to try to sew it big so that I can sliver trim it down later. Okay, liking these. Make sure you only have one layer. And two more. It's fun to see these scraps that were backings and things on other quilts. Pieces from Grand Illusion. Baggie of triangles left since then. I knew that these aquas would come out and play. Let's see what I mean. How that triangle just fits. It fits here where the dog ears are trimmed off and that trimmed off dog ear here too. So it's worth taking the time. Even if you cut with a specialty ruler such as the essential triangle tool, so you, you first cut the triangles and that one dog ear is off, flip the ruler around, trim, trim, the, other do, trim the other dog ear off. It, it makes it so much easier to fit those. There's also point trimmer um, rulers out there too that are really handy to keep on your cutting table so that when you're cutting shapes, if you cut off the dog ears ahead of time, it makes it a lot easier when you come to sewing. You can get things aligned the way that they need to be instead of overlapping triangles. Okay, one more. And again, there's just some little triangle points here that need to come off. It's just the corner of that white square, but it's looking really nice and square there. We've got the quarter inch height that we need here for the seam allowance on two sides. When I add this last triangle, this one will be done. I'm not sure whether I'm doing this quilt with 25, 30, or 36 blocks yet, but we will see how it looks as it comes together. So here's our first one. No trimming down. It's good the way it is. If something looks a little bit wonky, like I can see that little white square, peak, that corner peeking up, I can get those points off, but it's fine to go right into the quilt as is. Okay, perfect. Need a bunch more of those. Let's check on in. I forgot which button to push here. I almost hit the Facebook button. Mary C says, can't wait for the link up on Monday. I've got my En Provence to flimsy. Wonderful. You'll see it on the link up tomorrow. I love my wonder clips for putting sets together and for binding. I had hoped to get my mystery on my frame yesterday. I had a class sample being quilted that isn't quite done yet. I quilted each block with the same design. Garden Swirls Block 2 by Wasatch Quilting. And she's got a picture here of what she's doing. Oh, those are fun churn dash blocks. Those look great. Taking a second here for this to open up. But you can see the quilting design that she has put there in that block. And isn't that chevron fabric in the center fun? Will it biggie size if I go this way? Oh, there you go. Now you can see her quilting design there. That is just so fun. You'll finish that in no time, and the En Provence is not a rush. We are happy to see flimsies, completed quilts, quilts waiting to be put together, missing borders, piles of fabric. We love it all. So this will be our last one for our En Provence mystery, and that will start tomorrow, and I'm going to run it the full week. So it'll go all the way through Sunday, so you can add your progress. If you have a blog or a Flickr account, a, an Instagram, 
a Pinterest, a Google Plus photo. Um, the only thing that we can't link to is Facebook. It won't because your accounts are private, so that won't allow us to do that. But if your Instagram is private, please also, it, it won't work because everybody will try to click your link. And because you're private, it'll just come up with a page that's nothing. So you'll need to set your, your account to public to do that. And those um, link ups stay live forever. So even though the En Provence parts have been removed from the blog, if you just type up, type in the search box, link up, you'll get them all and you can go back through and it's still really fun to visit people's sites and, and see what they've shared. The colors are phenomenal. The ideas of taking off and doing different borders or doing this or that or adding triangles to the corners of blocks has been fabulous. I've loved the brainstorming process and it, it, it really makes it feel like a community. So thank you for sharing those with me. Um, Rochelle says, hand quilting during quilt cam is perfect. She says, I'm hand quilting a quilt for my grandniece. Perfect for quilt cam so I can hear, watch, and quilt. And thanks for taking time to do this. So I'm going to show you her photo. You can see her quilting stitches. Oh, she's down into the corner here. Oh, it's cute. She's got a, a spider or a bug down there in the corner. Can I turn it this way? Will it go? That's the better photo, I think. You see, can you see the texture of her echo quilting there? I love that there's contrasting thread. Let the thread play. That is just wonderful. And that little spider or an, oh, you're an ant. I get it. I'm a little slow, but I get it. You're the ant. That's Auntie Rochelle. I love it. Beautiful. Beverly Wood says, quilt cam finally. Finally getting to watch you live. I finished on Provence and am doing a Canadian 150 years anniversary quilt along and I would like to show you and so she's got oh I love that with all of the maple leaf red in there so these are her Canadian anniversary so if it's it's 150 years is that sesquicentennial I think so I think that's the word for it but those are those are her blocks will it get bigger this way yes there we go so that you can see aren't those sampler blocks beautiful and that turquoise in there with that red that is phenomenal. So I am sure that each block has its own little story and why it is significant to the history of Canada or what it represents. That is just wonderful. I love this stuff, but it's probably something I shouldn't be drinking on live quilt cam because it has bubbles and bubbles. <laughs> Woo. Bubbles make me have to excuse myself quite a bit. Okay, so we've got... I believe some more coming in. If you heard that buzzed on my phone, Maria also sent a picture of her en Provence. She says, I put the last borders on while watching quilt cam live. Love how it turned out using what I had in my stash. I tried it out on the bed and I'm thinking I might add one more border to make it bigger. Decisions, decisions. And my feeling is always if there's enough fabric to keep sewing to make it fit the bed if you will love it better and use it more if it fits the bed by all means add another border because it's it's not a race it doesn't matter how long it takes to make this and uh occasionally i love to make things king size just because there's no shortage of fabric but here's a picture of maria's she's got it all there her borders are on and it is absolutely beautiful i love her colors all from stash great job maria Yes, I love that. She's got that yellow, that light yellowy, very spring green and some looks like rusty peachy browns in there. That is just yummy. Gorgeous job. Okay, Sharon says quilt cam and anything with four exclamation points. <laughs> Gets my attention. She says Sharon here from South Weymouth, Massachusetts, where it's snowing pretty heavily again. Um, love quilt cam and catch it whenever I can. Have watched all the archived ones, too, sometimes more than once. Um, was wondering if I missed the last link up, but you explained it a second ago as I was writing this. Um, yeah, we, we, we gave it an extra week. It's It was just trying to do that while I was traveling. And what happens when I run a link up is that I get an announcement on my phone for every link up that's made. And then I have to check those link ups to make sure that it does, that they put in the full address of, of where, when you click the link, that it actually takes them to their page and not to some spam site or that they, you know, didn't have a typo in there and it went nowhere. Bubbles, excuse me. Mm. And uh, so I just figured it's, it's better to do this when I'm at home and I'm at home tomorrow. 
So we shifted it a week and sometimes shift will happen. She says the only thing that I don't like about quilt cam is that the sound is always jerky. It almost always sounds like you have the hiccups. Thanks to bubbly water. You know, this is this is a, a very amateur production with um, an external webcam hooked to my tablet. The microphone is on the camera. So if I turn my head, the sound may change. And all I can say is it's free. It is what it is. And the only alternative is to not do it at all. So um, I'm sorry that you that you have a problem with it, but I hope that you'll bear with us and then imagine what it would be like to be on this side of the camera. Um, and, and would you do it? So uh, I apologize if the sound is jerky to you. Probably when I turn my head and talk down at my machine and when I sew, the sound changes. But this is the, the best it's going to get from my basement studio on an external webcam hooked through a tablet running through Facebook. So thank you for joining me. Terry Lynch says, leader and ender challenge. Let's see what she wants. She says, I'd love a simple house block for the challenge. That would be really fun. That would be really fun. And um, who knows, maybe we could do that making the roofs with the essential triangle tool for flying geese or give them the alternative to do stitch and flip corners. Um, we could take the size of the happy scrappy houses that is on the the blog in the free patterns tab and shrinky that down to a smaller cute size um we we might have to think about that houses would be great it would have to be simple and and or maybe we could just say do any house in any style and let them choose anybody else's pattern that might be fun too i will keep that in mind terry thank you and ann says today's work quilting a twister table topper today so she's got fun colors oh those are gorgeous so she's doing this on her machine and looks like she's quilting spirals in the center so i'm going to biggie this green and red and gold and can you see the quilting texture i don't know if you can see it or not there i'm trying to deal with the reflection here on the tablet so um but she's got that going. Spiral quilting is such a fun way to just start in the center with your walking foot and go around and around and around and around all the way out to the outside edge. It's just a really fun technique. Okay, so we've got all four of these. And the one thing I didn't bring over here was a ruler that will measure them. Remember, this ruler is not measured in inches. It's measured in shape size in odd increments so I can't use that to cut normal strips but all of these look great I will give them a real iron press and then if there's any trimming that needs to happen if anything is really odd I will square them down remember there is no up <laughs> there's only down and if you're going to square anything be careful that you are watching your quarter inch here 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 and here because those are crucial if trimming means I'm going to lose these, I won't trim because that means that my if these are really big and need to go down and I'm going to lose these points, that means that my seam allowance here was too skinny and I would rather fix my seam allowance so that the unit comes out the right size and shape than lose all of my points in the process. Okay, so we have another batch to go here. And I'm still wanting to hear about what you do with your old rotary blades. So maybe there's a bunch of, of comments in there that, that address that, but I'm going to go back and look and see. Would love to know. It would be kind of neat maybe if the, if the guild had a container. I know you can dispose of things in sharps containers, but I don't want to carry things in my purse to go to the nearest sharps container. And they have to pay to have those containers disposed of, so I would hate to be adding to somebody else's disposal fund. Here's another one. Cute, cute, cute. Need like 30 of these, I think. Another thing um, that happened this past week on the 8th, besides it being my, my granny's 100th birthday, if my granny were still with us, her, she would have turned 100 on the 8th. I love the ceremony that they have in Japan for taking all of their bent and broken needles and 
I guess you set their spirits free or something, but they have like a big block of tofu that you put your bent and broken needles in as a way to send them off and saying, you know, thank you for the good work that you've done over the, over the past year. And who knows, we can have the ceremonial rotary cutter blade drop <laughs> into, into something. But I'm kind of liking the idea of putting them in an Altoids tin. And when the tin is full, wrap it with tape and write on there sharp and put it in the metal recycling so that that just doesn't end up in the landfill somewhere. It'll end up in the metals. Sadie's asleep on the floor. The gun shops have gunshots have stopped. Oh, she just heard me say her name. At least the shaking has subsided. This pregnant pause of no talking is for the woman who says that I was way too chattery. I really do like sewing with the knee, the knee control. I think I could become addicted. It's nice not having to have your foot so far out in front of you. Okay, this one. And that's all the squares that I have for today. So let's see if there was anything about the recycling of blades comments here. Quilt cam log cabin, thread stand. Well, here's a question. She says, can you talk about thread stands, especially when using vintage machines, pros and cons? Um, I am using a thread stand. I can actually turn the camera so that you can see it. There you go, right there. So this is this is one of the, the cheaper ones, um, but it is it is quite old. It's got a plastic base and a metal rod. Now they don't make them with metal rods anymore. This the, the Clover Company or whatever has this cheap plastic thing that is just really flexible and if you're not careful that will snap and break. But this one I've had for so long it doesn't even have the center post on it but it doesn't need it. The thread cone just rests there and I have been long arming since 1995 so I have a lot of thread cones of uh, various manufacturers for cotton thread that, that go back to the mid 90s and I am using them up in my piecing, especially string piecing because the thickness of the thread doesn't matter. But this is a cotton thread in just a normal thread weight, probably a little bit heavier than Aurifil, but I just adjust my a seam allowance so that even when sewing with this thread, it gives me um, the unit size that I need. But the th cone thread is very, very easy to use on a thread stand and the thread just comes up off of the cone over the little banded arm thing and then catches the the thread path here and is just thread normally if the thread path where this little hook is if if on any of my machines it wants to jump out of here what i do is just run the thread through a hole on an empty bobbin so the thread comes through the hole on the outer rim of the bobbin and sits on the spool pin 
and then it will follow its own path from there. So that's very easy. Vint using cones on vintage machines is a lot easier than using cones on modern machines. Some of the modern machines have lids and then the, the thread has to um, go through a path underneath the lid and, and catch the tensioner a certain way. And so cone threads may actually be harder to deal with that way. Um, another thing that you can do if you want the economy of buying um, thread on a cone is you can wind several bobbins and then just use a bobbin on the top right here. These are bobbins waiting to be used as bobbins run out. I usually run myself four or five bobbins ahead. But um, there's different ways to, to use cone thread, but depending on your machine model, um, if you have a, a machine that has the lid and everything happens inside the lid as far as all the threading, a, a cone thread stand may not be your best friend, but you can wind off of it on a bobbin and then put that bobbin on, on the spool pin that is inside the fold down lid and just put the little thing that goes at the end that keeps spools from flying off <laughs> off of there. So it's going to be machine dependent, but I love sewing with cone thread. It's, it's such a great value. Um, no matter what brand you buy, cone thread is, is a much better value than small spools. But I do love my small spools too. It just depends on what I'm sewing on. This is the end of a cone of machine quilting thread. And I figured this cone thread, I've been long arming for 22 years. So this thread is at least that old. And um, it matches the string piecing I was doing. So I'm just trying to sew this thread up until it's gone. So that's my story about cone thread holders. And I had another one, but I took it I took it upstairs. They, you can get them with heavy metal bases. So they don't go shifting across the table. But this this old plastic one, I like it because I can take it apart to go to retreat and it does the job that it that it's supposed to just be watching if you're using your Joann's coupon don't buy the one with the cheapy plastic black stand with the hook thing um I tried it was mine was bent in the package and I tried to unbend it and it promptly broke and it went back to the store so some things they should not have gone from metal to plastic and cone thread holders is one of them okay I'm going to move this back just a little bit. Hello again. Um, other questions. Let's see about questions. She says, sound is great in Minnesota. So she says, deboning while watching. Just got my book spiral bound and excited for your visit in August. So Kim is busy working on recycled shirts here. We'll biggie that up a little bit. Ooh, I like that orangey stripey one. That's gorgeous. So she's just cutting up her shirts while she's watching Quilt Cam today. And she says her sound is good. So... That makes me happy. I think there's so many variables. You know, some people are on satellite. Some people are on um, DSL through their phone. Some people are on cable. Some people are on a, a slower Wi-Fi signal. And I think all of these things come to play as far as things skipping, the sound fading in or out. And then there's the whole thing about this is coming through Facebook Live, which is a free service. So we deal with what we deal with. Jill says, Quilt Cam, Jill from Iowa, watching you on my laptop while hand sewing a binding. You are coming through perfectly. No problems with sound here. Thanks for taking time out of your day for us. So that kind of lets me know that maybe somebody's Wi-Fi connection is not so strong and it's a little bit intermittent with the sound there. So thank you. I am hardwired here. So um, the, the laptop itself is, is hardwired and um, coming through through good that's good I am looking at log cabin work so she says made 36 blocks for a king size log cabin love watching and getting all the wonderful piecing tips on Provence is still in progress for me and this is Michelle in Oklahoma and she sent a picture of her log cabin oh that is bright and cheery I love that layout so she's kind of got a star layout in the center of her log cabin anything barn raising I love. That is beautiful, Michelle. That's going to look really great when you get it together. And Lily Kangas, how are you, girl? 
She says, happy Sunday to you. I'm in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Canada, and apparently we have won the prize for the most snow this year. Something ridiculous like 10 feet. Okay, that's it. I'm going to go out and cut out down that daffodil and send it to you because you need some springtime loving up there. She says, I'm happily sewing hexes by hand while I watch with you today. Hugs to you. And that's from Lily. I love it when I see familiar names, Lily. So happy that you could tune in. Um, and one more, Cathedral Star. Since we have seen a lot of En Provence, here is Mary's um, Cathedral Star. She says, love this pattern. Thank you and love Quilt Cam. So we've got this here. Oh, that is just gorgeous. So this is uh, maybe a little bit blurry because I had to biggie size it to get to where you could see. This is the Cathedral Stars pattern. That's a free pattern at the top of the blog. And it uses two different blocks. It uses that wonderful 5440 or fight block that we love, the tall star points, Tri-Rex tool. So if you've done on Provence and you still want to play with those, make this one. Make this one. It's very similar. Four patches in there, Tri-Rex in there, but the alternate block. Can you see that? If I, if I turn it, it's on point. So I'm going to turn this. Uh, maybe you go up. No, but won't let me. It's going to turn the picture if I try to turn. I wanted to show you the block. It's very easy. Five four patches and four half square triangles make the alternate block. But do you see how it looks like it has ribbons that weave through the, the quilt pattern over, under, over, under, over, under? This is a really fun one, and you can play with the colors for that too. So try Cathedral Stars that's at the top of the blog. Okay. All righty. Well, everybody... It's been a wonderful, wonderful quilt cam, and I've gone about as far as I can go with the triangles that I have cut. I can't go any further until I cut some more. <laughs> so I think we are going to end it here. Um, as far as when next quilt cam will be, probably when I get back from Texas again. I go um, in... in Maybe, well, it's only the 12th. When do I leave? The 22nd? Do I have that much much time in between? We might be able to do another quilt cam next week, maybe an evening one. Um, and before I go to Texas, I'm going to be teaching in, uh, in Denton and then for a retreat down at Lake Roy Roberts. And I'm really excited about that to see the Texas contingency come and, and spend some time with me. Um, March has me in Ohio and in Michigan. So if you are part of those guilds, I look forward to seeing you there. And then April is going to be a complete cluster. So Quilt Cam may be um, a little bit further apart when we get into the really busy months of April, May, and June. But we'll do it as often as we can. As for me, I'm going to cut some more triangles. I'm going to finish up these centers. And then when the centers are done, well, I guess I better finish trimming up all of these papers into these triangles. And then I move on to the star points that are going to go um, on either side of these centers. So again, if you want to try your hand at making these blocks, they are somewhat related to the um, En Provence star block. Little bit different, bigger size, includes some string piecing. And this is the issue that you'll find the pattern in. This is volume 14 of 100 blocks. You should be able to get it digitally off the quiltmaker.com website. Um, I don't know what the direct link would be, but there should be a link to it there. And there's a there's hundred wonderful blocks in here, but I was trying to find, where is my page? What did I say? What page did I say that was on? Was it 50 something? No, we will check the index. <laughs> 32. So we'll go back to 32. I thought it was 42. And there it is. Okay. So here we have Straits of Mackinac on page 32. And of course, as a magazine, it will it will tell you, uh, I think I had a lot of paper pieced units in this. So they had the, the center star paper piece, the triangles cut from, um, from um, two and seven eighth inch squares. But if you know the way that I work, use the essential triangle tool for the half square triangles in the corners. Use your Tri-Rex for these tall star point blocks. String piece your, your big triangles first, and you can do that individually over cut pieces of paper. I did this with all the small pieces that were left over from doing panels. These will be trimmed the height of the strip set that I need and then cut into triangles. 
And then, of course, these centers are what I've been working on. The square and a square. You can do those paper piece. The pattern is in the magazine. You can draft your own. Or if you are lucky enough to have the easy center square or any other specialty ruler that does the same thing, this allows me to cut these center squares the exact size that I need. This is the size that I need. And then I just use the uh, essential triangle tool for cutting the corners and adding them on. There's many ways to do basic units, but this is how I'm doing this block. Feel free to make some. Maybe you'll want to make a table runner. Maybe you'll want to make a bed runner for the end of your bed. Maybe you want to change the colors. I think this one would look great in Christmas colors. It would be absolutely gorgeous. Uh, maybe you want to just make 12 blocks for a throw. Or maybe you want to go big and make it king, in which case try 36 and then add a bunch of borders to it. Um, until next time, you know where to find me. I'll be here in the basement sewing until Tuesday, and then I'm heading up to the cabin for the week for some really hands-on sewing time. So we will catch you there through the blog, through Instagram, through Facebook, through um, Twitter, wherever you follow, through YouTube. I'm happy that you included me in your sewing life today. Until next time, we'll see you later, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.